So let me explain like a Tony Robbins conference, and I think they're incredible, but. I recently had a thought, and I think about the millions and the hundreds of millions of dollars, probably billions of dollars, that are spent in the self-help industry. And we go to these events, and we get all hyped up, and then we come home, and a month later, life is back to the same. Or we decide, hey, I wanna finally step out and go do something big in my life, and then three months later, you're like, I just got my ass kicked, and there's no way I'm doing that. Like, the constant repeating patterns that we go through to make change in our lives, and yet we still find ourselves right back where we started. Why? I've heard so many theories on why this happens, so why does it actually happen? I'm gonna use the word limiting beliefs, but I'm gonna use it in a different frame than I think most people would. So let me explain like a Tony Robbins conference, and I think they're incredible, but what happens when you go to a Tony Robbins conference? It's the same thing that happens that day that you set your New Year's resolutions. You are in a mode, a part of you, like you are so authentically there in that moment as yourself. And then when you come home, have you, do you know that voice in your mind that says, what were you smoking? Like, what were you thinking? There's no way you can do that. Or that same voice that says, why are we starting a business? This is like all of our worst fears coming true. Why are we doing this? You ever had that thought? Part of me wants to start a business, part of me is terrified, part of me wants to keep doing this, but part of me feels like I can't. Somehow something gets in the way. Let me explain what it is. And the best way to explain the way it is is to think about what is the feeling that you get in that moment. <clears throat> this is gonna come together, Orson, I promise. So here's what's happening. You have a core belief. Call it a limiting belief. I'm gonna call it a core belief. I was out to lunch with someone today and his word was imposter syndrome. I'm afraid to put content out because I'm worried that it's not good enough. And then I asked him, is this because you're worried about how you feel doing it or how it's going to be received? And he said, I'm not worried about how it's gonna be received. I'm worried about how I feel. I don't know that I feel qualified to do it. And then I said, interesting. When was the time, the earliest time you can think of where you felt not good enough? And he was able to articulate conversations with his parents where they would say things like, hey, you shouldn't do that. You're not good enough for that. In fact, it was a whole lifetime of thoughts and conditioning of you're not really good enough for that. That's not who you are. I wouldn't do that if I were you. And that built and built and built in him to a point where he is no longer able to see an opportunity without thinking first, I'm not good enough for this. This isn't who I am. That's imposter syndrome. But what happened is in those early moments, a part of him was exiled or kind of broke off. And it was this young version of him that wasn't good enough. What's interesting is every time somebody tells him that or every time he feels that, he feels like a young version of himself. So this is a part of him. And then what happens is he doesn't like how he feels when that part is triggered, when he's not good enough. So a manager part shows up and says, I got this. I'm gonna make sure that part of you never sees the light of day and we're just gonna not make any big moves. So I'm glad that you got all excited at that Tony Robbins conference, but guess what? I'm in charge and we're not doing anything different. What we've been doing is working fine, so let's just keep it the way it is. And that's called the manager part. It's a, it's a self-defense mechanism to protect us from getting hurt. We're brilliant in our minds and how we survive, but that's exactly what's happening. So I guarantee you, if there's something you've tried to do and then you talked yourself out of it, you'll recognize that there was a part of you that felt vulnerable. Like, oh, I remember that happening a long time ago. But now just for a second, consider that why would his parents say that to him? Well, maybe their experience was they tried something and they failed and they were doing their best with what they understood to prevent their kids from having the same experience. But when he goes back now to that moment and he recognizes that, wait a minute, I have progressed. I have done hard things. I do feel worthy to be up on stage or to, to create that content. Maybe they're wrong. Maybe they were coming from a perspective that wasn't true. And so maybe that doesn't have to be true anymore. Maybe I can thank that part, that manager, and say, thank you for all the ways that you've helped us stay safe in our life but I just wanna take a minute and show you what we've accomplished and invite you to trust me now as we step into the dark on this. I got this, I can do this, and I've continued to do this. And allow that part of you to now be on your team instead of on the opposite team. So that is a limiting belief and that is exactly how it shows up and affects us. So 
what's happening at the Tony Robbins conference or the last coach you worked with or that big challenge, that big business that you want to start is you have parts that have had conflict and adversity in your life. Their job is to prevent you from failing. They don't understand that you have the capacity to succeed and they're doing what they understand best which is to prevent you from failing but at some point you've got to be willing to recognize the modes you get into the parts that show up and take leadership and say no now it's our time to go forward to lean into the fear and realize that it may not even be justified it's probably not even true and even if it is every great achievement in humanity came in the face of adversity in the face of fear in the face of death in the face of impossible odds that's when the great things happen. So adversity is no barometer of like justification for quitting. It's when you know you're on the right track. The obstacle is the path. So when you face fear or conflict, doing what you feel in your gut you're supposed to do in your life, there's a really good chance that you have a protected part of you that's trying to suppress you from taking a step into the dark and potentially failing. So thank the part, recognize the core, grounded, authentic self of you that decided to do it and anchor to that, hold to that and step into the dark and realize that there is light at the tunnel. You will get through this. You will succeed because you have what it takes. The fact that you conceived of the idea is evidence to me that you have the capacity to figure out how to do it. The problem is this. We don't spend enough time in our lives putting ourselves in the moments where we have no choice but to succeed. Think of the last time you put yourself in an environment where you had no choice but to either succeed or die or fail miserably. And I'd be willing to bet you figured out how to make it work. Maybe not immediately, but you did. So what is the next level of success or joy or fulfillment or achievement for you and what's holding you back? And I promise you this, that obstacle is the path. So if that connects with you, welcome to my zone of genius. Welcome to the place that I live. The thing I love to do most is to help people get unstuck and break through to that next level. And if that's you, if you recognize a call to get to the next level in your life and you feel stuck, I would love to spend 30 minutes on a call with you for free to just talk through where you're at, where you've been, where you want to go and what's in the way. And I'll promise you in 30 minutes, we're going to clarify your journey and explore some ideas to help you get to that next level. But please do not stop. Life is about progression and growth. It's not about conformity and playing small. It's time to level up. I did too. Bit long in the tooth, but it ended well.